What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast. I'm Scott Baer here with Tori McElhaney and Chris Rim, uh, checking in with you at 2.07 a.m. Yes. That's right. On it's Friday early. morning, technically a day after, uh, the Falcons lost 25 to nothing to the New England Patriots on Thursday Night Football. I am a little astonished, guys, that they haven't kicked us out yet. And and, and the lights are still on. Yeah, here's yes. the thing. Um, if anyone wants to send me a Venmo at some point when you listen to this, my Venmo is open. I will be looking for any caffeine pick-me-up. So, um, yeah, hit, hit a girl up. I'm, I'm quite tired. Yeah, uh, uh, Tori has now had two servings of ice cream yeah. during the game and just downed about half of a – bag of m&ms that is i saw it yeah that's the thing is i i needed sustenance and sustenance <laughs> came in the form of the ice cream and i'm not i have no regrets there is not a part of me that regrets the second thing of ice cream that i got no judgment will be had in this uh this establishment yeah <laughs> and i still think that that's I, st- I still think that's probably better than, than than my strategy which is caffeine on top of red bull on top of yeah scott does do the, does this he does this thing during the week where he has a ton of coffee and then also two red bulls and i really don't think it's healthy yeah, but, that's but, a, but it's not it's, it, it's fine crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, I don't, that's not my diet remember. y'all we are but delulu do, over here yeah, we are full on delusional now, it is way too late to for the this. viewers who i've i've got listeners not viewers. Know this, or, or <laughs> listeners to the <laughs> listeners out there you know my body is a temple this is chris <laughs> room body is a temple. i do i do eat ice cream from time to time had some tonight was very Unhappy with the lack of rainbow sprinkles tonight, but <laughs> yeah, they know. only had chocolate sprinkles. But, but so it was a real setback. But it was it was pretty good, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, a fun part of the evening. Th- there weren't very many fun parts of the evening for the Atlanta Falcons against the Patriots. Obviously, uh, the the score tells you the the story, and you all know the drill. If you're a faithful final whistle listeners, that we're going to take four quarters and we're going to go over this game. Now, we're not going to go over every detail of this one. Starting off the top, we are going to discuss what went wrong, how much of an impact not having uh, Patterson was on this game. We're also going to talk about something that Tori was very clear about all game long. <laughs> there adamant. will be no defensive slander here. <laughs> and we'll I, have none of it. <laughs> and I think that's a good point. Uh, we're also going to talk about what needs to be fixed. And in the last part, what games that uh, Falcons fans should be attuned to on Sunday and Monday because there's no Falcons football over the course of the weekend. So we're going to get to all that. But before we do, a big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn about all the new awesome features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And we're going to start with quarter number one, trying to – summarize exactly what went wrong here, which was another multiple score loss in a five-day span. It was very recently that the Falcons were the number seven seed in the NFC playoff picture. They were four and four. Five days later, uh, after a tough loss to the Dallas Cowboys and another one here to the New England Patriots, they stand at four and six. And this wasn't an identical carbon copy of what happened against Dallas. So, Tori, where do you think that this particular game went awry? Yeah, I, I think, gosh, it's it's hard to pinpoint, like, exactly one spot where it, it didn't go it, – it started kind of to go off the rails. I remember when we were talking to Arthur Smith after the loss to Dallas and he was like, you know, it was that second quarter and he called it an avalanche. Right. But I felt like there wasn't like a specific moment – in this game where it fell apart, I just felt like the, de- the the offense never got going. There was never a point in time where I thought that uh, – or or I, th- I, I there was just never a point in time where I thought things were going in the right direction for this offense. I didn't think that they were picking up steam at all. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's really, really tough when you kind of look at the, the numbers itself, I, you know, being – Outscored by opponents 68 to three in the last two games. That's you can't. There's no sugarcoating that, and I don't think coaches or players would be sugarcoating that. There's also the fact that the run game it's still struggling to be established. The Patriots outgained the Falcons 134 yards to 40 um, in the run game. I, I, and, and then there's just the third down inefficiencies that we've seen too. There were two for 11 tonight. There were one for 11 last week or, or last week five days ago on right. Sunday. It's just all of these things accumulating to 
to what went wrong. It's not one moment. It's just the whole thing. Yeah, and I, and I think I would agree in terms of – it's hard to – I don't think there's, like, a specific moment. But one moment that does kind of stand out to me was the field goal that Youngway made. And oh, then yeah. And then he made the field goal, and then there was a penalty, and then he got pushed back, and then they missed the field goal. So I don't, I don't think that was a point where you look back and say, oh, man, they – this is where the game really turned or, you know, even using that avalanche term that Arthur Smith used last week. But that was just a moment that stood out to me in terms of, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, or we can do hypotheticals and mm-hmm. things like that. But maybe just seeing points on the board, you know, helps a team. I, I, don't, we, I don't know, obviously, but maybe seeing points on the board can help a team is 10-3 instead of 10-0. You're maybe going to halftime down 13-3 instead of 13-0. So later on in the game, Maybe you take that field goal instead of going for that right. that fourth that, that fourth down, um, and that was like a fourteen play seven thirty seven minutes and thirty second yeah. drive that ended with no points because of a flag. So I, I don't know if that's the point that where the game changed because, like you said, it was I think just a, the entire game was just the the offense kind of struggling to capitalize on the the position the defense put them in. Right. But that was just a play that stood out to me. Yeah, something that I think like also deserves to be talking about like deserves to be broken down is the fact that they didn't have Cordero Patterson right and I think when you look at this offense and what this offense has been over the course of the first half of the season Cordero Patterson has been everything for this offense he has been this the spark plug for this offense and I think looking at it and going into it and not having him you saw why he's so important to this offense yeah his value was very clear there was a point during the game where I think we even discussed what would the score be if Patterson was yeah. there. And the answer could have been the score would have been exactly the same. I doubt that, though. Yeah. And it's it's weird. I'm staring at the box score here. and It was it was 16 to nothing. That's still a two-score game. It was a two-score game up until two minutes left in the game. That's why there's no avalanche. That's why there's no unraveling. It was just kind of a slow, uh, methodical, you know, kind of approach to this game. It, it wasn't terribly exciting in – in many ways and not having Patterson there I do think had an impact and it, I, it speaks to his volume but especially when they when Bill Belichick can devote every yes. uh, part of his s- schematic mind to slowing down Kyle Pitts mm-hmm. because there isn't that 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 other option and it's not like they just lost Patterson right they, they lost Patterson which was compounded by the fact that Hayden Hurst was put on IR earlier yep. Thursday that Calvin Ridley missed his fourth consecutive game it's a personal matter but nonetheless uh, that that you have three skill players not there and no offense to parker hesse and marvin hall and and uh, Allison. thank you very much yep. no offense to those guys but hurst ridley patterson it just hits different it does it it, it, it changes the dynamic of the game i don't think that can be ignored and we're going to start quarter number two talking about a defensive effort that was a lot better than what we saw the Falcons against the Cowboys. Instead of me doing the intros that I normally do, Tori, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to turn it over to you. You're going to let me a, filibuster. You made a great point in the second half. Yeah. A very assertive comment that I think uh, the listeners. Yeah. Need to know. So it, I guess it was probably like halfway through the third quarter. It was still 13 to nothing, and I mentioned on Twitter, I was like, I don't care if the defense from now until the end of the game goes out and gives up 13 more points I don't care because I will not write a single thing about this defense after this game is over because I don't think that this loss is on the defense and that I'm putting that on myself too I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that because I thought this defense played very well and I thought this defense put this offense in really really good positions to go down and score put up any points at all. Uh, You have the A.J. Terrell interception, which was his first interception this year, which is a really exciting moment for somebody who has been playing as well as we've seen A.J. Terrell play this year. Uh, You had a bunch of three and outs forced by this defense. You had – I just – you had a lot of red zone efficiency where they were keeping the Patriots out of the end zone. So – it, yes, there were broken down plays and there were moments that I'm sure this defense would want back. But when you're in offense and you're looking at a 13 to nothing you know, lead, 
that's that that doesn't make you feel good that you can't outscore that and and I think that is where I kind of was just like you know I'm not gonna say anything about the defense because I liked how they played I thought they played well and that's just kind of what I thought And, and I mean people can disagree with me all they want but at the end of the day I feel like this offense I mean they didn't score any points so it's really hard to be like this wasn't a collective game when for the most part, and Matt Ryan even said it after the game, this defense kept this offense in the game. Yeah, and there, there's obviously no perfect – obviously there are things they probably – plays they probably want back or situations they might want right. back. But I think – I don't – I think what you said, I, I would have – I think we would have a hard time finding someone who could disagree and say the defense played bad today. This might have been their best game today. One yeah. One of their best games Yeah, today. I think so. Uh, you know – especially when you consider the fact that the Pats scored 45 last week. Right. They scored 54 three weeks ago. They scored 24 on the Panthers. This was an offense that was humming coming in. Yeah, So and and the, the, the Falcons allowed 19 points. Mm-hmm. So the, the defense allowed 19 points. And I think if you allow 19 points against – any team, I think you'll you'll take that at this in, in, level, one hundred percent. Yeah, or, or yeah. Ar- around that number, you'll take that. So yeah, the de- the defense was was great, and the offensive ha- has had their days where defense has right. had their days. We have to give credit where it's due. Yeah, and tonight it was DMPs and the defense. As much as you know, maybe they've struggled in mm-hmm. the past. Tonight they had a they had a great night, mm-hmm. and and I think. Yeah, I think the offense definitely need to step up, and when you you score zero points, we don't we don't need to say that. Right. Yeah. They already they already there know. Matt, yeah. Matt said that himself. Well, I think going back to like that Carolina game, I remember Arthur Smith saying after the game, he was like, "You have to score more than thirteen points." Yeah. I think he would say, "You have to score more than if you have to score more than thirteen, you definitely have to score more than three and yeah. zero. Exactly. Yeah. Um. When I was covering the the uh, the Raiders, Charles Woodson was on two pretty bad teams. And Chuck was phenomenal as a quote, and he was, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He can be as honest as he wants. And more than one occasion, he'd be like, if we gave up less than 20, that's a win. Yeah. And, and that should be a win that the offense should make stand. Because there were times where the defense was giving up less than 20, and they still lost. Yeah. And Charles would look at, 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 at his defensive players and be like, we did our job. Yeah. And and I do think that that there is a dividing line of of, re- of responsibility here. That's why, yeah, it's twenty five to nothing. They gave up ninety points. That's too many. But this this Falcons team is built to win games by scoring twenty eight. Right? Yep. It's, right. It's built to to do those types yeah. of things. And while nobody his head is being held high after this one, there's a lot of anger and frustration and belief that they've have played below their potential over the last two weeks. It, I do think that defensively, though, that 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 this could be something to build on yeah. because the Patriots do things that the Falcons aren't good at defending: physical, downhill, in-your-face running. Mm-hmm. I thought they were pretty good. They oh were. my god! I know we're about to go over, but I didn't <laughs> think about the running game. Yeah, the Pats have three guys who ran for 100 yards uh, this season, and you know, Ramondre Stevenson, right. Bolden, Williams, and. You didn't see them dominate in the way that this this defense have dominated on the ground. So I don't yeah. want to take us too over the time, but that's something that we definitely didn't mention as far as the, the run defense that was stout too. Yeah, and uh, and I think if 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 you're looking at what we're going to talk about in the next quarter about things that needs to be fixed, I think that there are things to build on from this defensive performance as we try to dissect it and see how the Falcons can do better as we move forward. And we are moving past this game. Already 25 to nothing. We've identified it. We've dissected it. It's time to start looking towards the future a little bit, which is exactly what Arthur Smith said that he's going to do over the course of this mini bye weekend, that he and his coaching staff are going to go back to the office. They're going to self-scout. They're going to reflect. They're going to identify ways that they can get better, right? The obvious fan point might be, well, it can't get much worse, right? That you're not scoring points, you're losing games, you're losing games by multiple scores. All bad news, right? If you go back to the first two games of the year, something I asked Jake Matthews about, was there anything to be learned from the first two games when they got beat by multiple scores by superior teams in weeks one and two, and then they came back and they had better stretches, right? So I guess the overall question here is what needs to be fixed right away? If you're doing a triage and you're trying to figure out how to get the Falcons rolling again, uh, where do you start? How do you get this thing back 
uh, at least so they can be more competitive than they have been over the last two weeks. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think I think they need to figure out a way to give Matt Ryan more time. I think that's really the most important thing, whether that – and I'm not going to try to play coach here because I'm not the coach. But whatever that – whatever Arthur Smith needs to do to make that happen, if that's, you know, chipping, you know, defensive ends, if that – whatever that is. Yeah. Matt Ryan – plays his best when he has time and he doesn't need all day he just needs a couple seconds and he'll find someone or he'll even run we've seen we <laughs> have <laughs> seen um, Matty so, Ice take so off yeah, Matty Wills take Matty off. Wills yeah, yeah and I think uh, even with the the team being depleted um at, at its receivers I think Russell Gage is still is still a, a solid target I think Tajay Sharp has proven to be reliable and obviously Kyle Pitts is there and also the running backs can catch Mike Davis can catch and and I, and I think so. I, for me, that, that's one thing that I think needs to be fixed, and, and this offense will perform better. Oh, I, I have a lot of things kind of swirling around in my head, but I think this has been a point of emphasis over the course of the last, like, two years of covering this team, but establishing a run game. I, and I think Matt Ryan said it best after – the game where he was talking about the run game and he, he just kind of said, he was like, you know, it, it wears a defense out. And when you're not wearing a defense out, it makes it harder on you. And, and I know that we've kind of looked at a lot of stats and I know there are a lot of people on Twitter. I see you guys in my mentions all the time asking about Mike Davis. And here's what I'll say about that is I, I went back and I looked at what his numbers are and what his stats are. And it's really hard to kind of look at those stats and be like, oh, it's only on Mike Davis because he's getting hit at the line of scrimmage over and over and over again. Same thing with Cordero Patterson. The only difference is, is Cordero Patterson's yards after um, initial contact are a little bit more. Um, so – when I'm kind of thinking about this run game, it's it's in run blocking. It, and it, it goes back to what I know Matt Ryan has said before, where it's like it's all 11 of us doing our job. And I just think that in order for this defense, I mean this defense, this offense to be moving the way that it wants to, it has to be coupled with a run game that is more productive than what we've seen it be in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so so that to me is kind of what I, I look at as being, one of the top things that needs to be fixed. And, and I think it, it'll it help out with kind of what Matt Ryan was talking about post game, where, I, you know, he was asked, what's the most disappointing part of the last couple of weeks of this offensive struggle? And he said, it's the lack of production. I mean, it's sim simply it's the lack of production. And so I think when you kind of ha have the movement down the field that you want and you're not, and you're getting kind of like, four or five yards on first and second down and not zero yards or a loss, I think that's a difference. Yeah, this stat blows my mind. Against the Patriots, the Falcons averaged 3.2 yards per play. That won't get you a first down. No. At all, mm -hmm. which which means that you, you're just not moving the ball productively. And to that point, I, w I actually came in thinking – third down offense simply has to be better but a point that you have pointed out that that you've made several times yeah. including I think I in, said it last week too including yeah. in in press conferences are are these negative or uh gains on first down mm -hmm. that's that put you behind the sticks it, it, I, I was sitting next to our uh to our head of digital content, uh, Dan Gad, and he he was in shout he, out Dan, shout out Dan. <laughs> he was actually pointing out that all these third downs were third and unmanageable. Yeah, it's like third and seven, third and eight, third and nine that we saw a bunch of different times against the defense that like that can really pack it in. So uh, I think that uh, that has to be better. The whole operation of keeping the uh, chains moving and being more efficient, especially on early downs. And we're coming down to quarter number four. Be, and with this Falcons, a Week 11 game already in the rear view and a whole NFL slate before you, I know. And NFL. a whole uh, off weekend for us. And a whole off weekend. Bow, yeah. bow, bow, bow. It kind of brings up the uh, question here. If you're going to sit down and watch an NFL game, if you're going to pay attention to some scores, which one are you going to pay attention to? Which one should Falcons fans pay attention to as they keep an eye on the rest of the league? Uh, I'll go first. 
Uh, Let's though do it. I'm sure Falcons fans won't like my answer, uh-huh. but I think it means a lot to the Falcons. But I'm going to say the Saints and the Eagles. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting game to see, one, what Saints team shows up, because I feel like we've seen a lot of different Saints teams over the course of the the first half of the, the season. So I'm curious to see what, what team shows up. And then, of course, with Philly, I mean, I got to shout out Chris Rim's uh, hometown of, of <laughs> Philadelphia. Um, nice. But, but no, that's, that's a game that I think is going to be really interesting to watch, not just for um, – the Falcons, but the, these these two teams are pretty similar in record. I mean, the Saints are five and four, Eagles are four and six, pretty similar to the Falcons. So that's that's the game that I'm going to watch. I think it'll be an interesting one. Yeah, and uh, I'll be watching probably that game too. And then on my laptop or my ah. college, we used to have three televisions, so mm-hmm. we used to be like that. Is in. such a boy thing to do every, oh, we did that too for e- sure see every boy that i've ever been in their like apartment from the age of like 18 to now 25 <laughs> that is what their apartment looks like it's yeah. a saw so- it's always multiple televisions gotta I mean, have the games on well i mean like one has to be madden yes of course yes. but yes. the right. other ones you gotta have the games on. well not on sunday we have the games on all three because oh, we have yeah. like a steelers fan pats fan like a vikings fan or something so we were watching those games it's but the commitment for me mm-hmm. digress but <laughs> the game that I think Falcons fans should watch outside of that Saints game would be the Panthers versus the football team. Cam Newton will make his first start. Likely wow. Cam Newton versus Riverboat Ron. That whole reunion, a little bit of tension there. Who knows what's going to happen. We love the tension. We love and the storylines. You know, it's just Cam. You don't know what you're going to get. We've seen Cam. He took his helmet off. He said, I'm back. You know, a lot of excitement. Then he's in a division. And this yeah. Panthers team – They've looked so different. Diff- yes, yes, that's the exactly. Best way. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, this is this is the the thing about this year. Everybody's looking yeah. different every but week. But the Panthers, I think, uh, and I I don't I might be overstating, but out of every five and five team in the league, they might be the the one team who has like the highest ceiling and. Mm. Even I don't want to say the lowest floor, but just can can go either yeah. either direction. Their defense is so good, and then now with Cam Newton at quarterback, there's and Christian McCaffrey back. There's a lot of questions in, in the division, and the Falcons play them soon. So that's the game I think they should watch. Yeah, I was definitely gonna take that one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, for sure, I I I guess I'll just go to why not scout out the next opponent. Uh, Jacksonville is playing the 49ers, which are all of a sudden four and five and right back in the middle of things, and they looked like world beaters. Uh, against the Rams, which according to how the NFL is going, means that they're going to lay an egg in Jacksonville, <laughs> right? That nobody can make any sense of it. But nonetheless, you might as well check out and see what Urban Meyer's team has oh. to offer, I guess. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, hey. and, and, and the Falcons can scout another opponent. They travel out to the Bay Area. Hey, your oh, hometown, sure. your neck of My the woods. Hometown. Uh, yeah, so – I think that would be a good one to keep an eye on. I'm sure that you're catching a theme here, right, is to keep an eye on the NFC teams that are around the Falcons' ballpark because if they can listen to us and <laughs> correct all the mistakes that we pointed right, out in quarter number three, we magically, know everything, Oh, right? yeah, we yeah. just wave magic wands. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it works. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, keep an eye on the other teams. Enjoy a frosty cold one, some pretzels. And have a good weekend. And we will check back in with you now that quarter number four has wrapped up. We will check back in with you after that Jaguars game from Jacksonville. So let's get out a couple of quick things. One, happy Thanksgiving yes. oh, to yeah. everyone. Everybody enjoy. That celebrates. Everybody that's yes, everybody everyone that celebrates. who celebrates. Yes, Correct. Because we have some Canadians on our uh, team, and yes. they do not celebrate and Thanksgiving. Uh, they so don't. For our you know, fans overseas who might not. You know, oh, yeah. yeah you Shout know. out to Germany and yes, UK. UK, you know, get your turkey going. I don't really eat turkey Thanksgiving, but, you know, whatever what? you like to eat. What do you eat on Thanksgiving? Jamaica food. Oh, like yeah, that's soul right. That's food. right. Yeah. Yes, you know. I think, I think maybe that's the way to go. Honestly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like uh, to add my memos, chicken and dressing, or turkey and dressing to that because I will die on the hill that it's the best. And Indeed. I won't debate you there. Yeah. Yeah. Can't debate with Mamaw. Right? No Everybody, Mamaw. Everybody's heading to Mamaw's house. 100%. Indeed. Sign us up. Before you do that, uh, go to Spotify, iTunes. Give us a five-star rating and a nice review, pretty please. That would be super nice. And 
We will talk to you again as the Falcons move forward off of this mini buy back in action against Jacksonville, trying to rebound and get off of this two-game losing streak. We'll talk to you then. Doo-doo-doo.